All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are recording a solution set to solving systems of linear equations with substitution. So in the first problem, uh, we already have the y variables isolated. And the thinking is if y equals y, Okay, and we can actually prove that by the identity property of equality, ipe, okay, then 6x plus 24 equals negative 2x, all right, because y equals 6x plus 24 and y equals negative 2x and y equals y, therefore, 6x plus 24 equals negative 2x, okay? So we're just going to solve that equation, and that's what we do. 6x plus 24 equals negative 2x minus 24 minus 24. This cancels. We have 6x equals negative 2x minus 24 and then we add 2x to both sides it cancels out the x's on the right side and we have 8x equals negative 24 and we can now divide both sides by the x coefficient which is 8 and cancel out the 8's, giving us x equals negative 3. And now we take that x equals negative 3, and we substitute. So we haven't actually performed substitution yet, but we're about to. So we can substitute this into either equation. The easier one is obviously this one. They both work, by the way. Um, but we just plug it in. So we have y equals negative 2x, and we want to evaluate that where x equals negative 3, okay? So you can think of it like function evaluation, y equals negative 2, open parentheses, negative 3, okay? Therefore, y equals 6. We express our equation uh, or rather our solution as a coordinate pair x comma y since the solution to a system of linear equations is just the coordinate pair of the intersection of the two lines which in this case is negative 3 comma 6 so this is your answer okay and that's the end of number one Okay, here we are with number two, similar problem. We've already got the y equals y thing down, so we know we're just gonna set 6x minus five equal to negative four x plus 15. And let's gather the x's, plus four x plus four x. So I'm gonna zoom in this much, I might make it smaller, okay. So just to make a point, um, negative 4x plus 4x is 0. That's why I usually just put the cancel mark. Okay, so now I've got over here uh, some math to do. 6x plus 4x, that equals 10x. Okay, so we just bring down the minus 5. 10x minus 5 equals 15. Okay, all right. So now what? Well, we're trying to get x by itself, so let's add 5 out of the equation on both sides. And now we have 10x equals 20. Divide both sides by the coefficient of the x variable, which in this case is 10. Cancel, cancel, x equals 2. So now that we know that x equals 2, we can substitute into either equation. I'll just do the top one since I don't like negative numbers. So now I'm going to perform substitution. And what I'm really going to do is, this is kind of like the easy version of substitution. 
I'm going to evaluate uh, y equals 6x minus 15, or sorry, minus 5, uh, where x equals 2. Okay, so what that looks like is y equals 6, open parentheses, close parentheses, minus 5. And inside there, I'm going to put that 2 is going right in there. So now y equals 12 minus 5. Therefore, y equals 7. So the solution to the system, which is expressed as a coordinate pair x comma y, is 2 comma 7. And that's the end of number 2. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with number three. Now, in this part of the problem set, we have these equations written in a different form, uh, where you're given the standard form. Um, the standard form of a linear equation is ax plus by equals c. So you can see um, this is a, b, and C. Okay? So that's standard form. And another, we have to solve one of these for one letter and then stick it into the other equation. And that's what substitution is all about. And so um, that's what we need to do. So if we look at these two equations, um, I'm going to go ahead and solve. You can choose whichever one. I'm going to solve the top equation for y. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's write down what we're going to do. So here's part one. We're going to solve negative ax minus 2y equals negative 24 for for y. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So let's write it down. Negative 8x minus 2y equals negative 24. Let's get our guide mark out here. Let's draw in our guideline. Okay. Now, remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to get y by itself. Okay, trying to isolate y. So we go from the outside in. Step one would be to add 8x to both sides of the equation. That allows me to get rid of it on the left. And now I have negative 2y equals 8x minus 24. Now what I'm going to do is divide each term by the coefficient of the y variable. In other words, divide each term by negative 2. Okay. And then that allows me to cancel, cancel, get y by itself, which is what I want. y equals, now 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4, so I have negative 4x. And then negative 24 divided by negative 2 is positive 12. So I have negative 4x plus 12. Well, that's fantastic. I'm happy to hear that. I've found what y is equal to for the time being. And what I'm going to do is take this, okay, and I'm going to stick this not in the top one. I can't use that one. I have to put it in here. So I'm going to put it right there, okay? So that's what we're going to do, and that's the substitution part. So let's write out what we're going to do now. This is part two. I'm going to substitute, so I'm just going to abbreviate sub, negative 4x plus 12, for 4, y in the equation negative 6x minus 4y equals negative 18 
and solve for for x. Okay, so now I'm trying to find x. So let's do that. Because I already, well, you'll see. So now we have negative 6x minus 4. And now what we're going to do is do a big open parentheses and a, like leave a big space there. And then where the y would be, because we're going to stick this in there. And then we're going to say that that's equal to what it's equal to, negative 18. So now let's go ahead and put this in there, negative 4x plus 12. And I'll use purple. So we're going to write negative 4x plus 12. OK. And so now we're going to distribute negative 4 to both terms inside the parentheses. So let's focus in our attention right here. So the negative 6 didn't change, negative 6x. And now think about it, negative 4 times negative 4x, mm, that's plus 16x. And negative 4 times positive 12 is going to be minus 48. I got to get my ruler out so I keep my everything lined up. And that's going to equal negative 18. Well, let's gather the constant terms together. Constant terms are terms without letters with them. Okay, so those are both constants. And by contrast, uh, these are variables with coefficients. Okay? So, just so you know, when I say constant, I'm referring to like numbers. And when I say variables with coefficients, I'm referring to the letters. So it's plus 48 on both sides. Okay, well that's great because that cancels that. And now we can combine like terms. I have uh, negative 6x and plus 16x. So what do these combine into? Well 16x minus 6x is 10x. So we'll actually write that over here. That's 10x equals. Okay, and now a little bit of side work here. You can't subtract, like you can't add 48 to negative 18. So what you really need to do is do 48 minus 18. Think about it like that. Okay. Well, 8 minus 8 is 0. 4 minus 1 is 3. And it's a positive number because the bigger number was positive. So 10x equals 30. Well, that's great news. It's like easy division here. Divide both sides by 10. And we arrive at x equals 3. That is fantastic. Lovely. Perfect. So now we know x equals 3. Okay, so what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to plug that x equals 3 into one of those two equations. Doesn't matter which. Um, I mean, since we were working with the top one before, we, well, we worked with both of them already. Which one looks easier for the 3? I actually think the bottom equation might work a little bit better. So let's write down uh, what we're going to do here. Um, part 3. We're going to sub x equals 3, okay, for x in this negative 6x minus 4y equals negative 18. Negative 6x minus 4y equals negative 18. And solve for y. Okay, we're going to solve for y because we already know x. So let's do it. We have negative 6. Now we're going to do an open parentheses here and a close parentheses. And minus 4y equals negative 18. 
and we'll get our little ruler out. Okay, now substitute. You stick that three right here. Okay, I'm going to write it in purple, three. Okay, so now negative six times three is negative 18. So we have negative 18 minus 4y equals negative 18. Whenever I see this, I get happy because if I add 18 to both sides, I end up with 0 on both sides there. See? So those cancel. And now I've got negative 4y equals 0. Okay, this confuses a lot of students, but don't get worried. It's okay for things to equal zero. You just can't divide by zero, but you can divide zero by things. Okay, so cancel, cancel. Why anything, uh, anything that zero is divided by is zero. So zero divided by negative four is zero. So y equals zero. Wonderful news. So now I've got x equal three and y equals zero. So I can write out my solution which remember is the point of intersection on the graph, 3 comma 0, which means it intersects at, like if you're looking at a graph, I just really want to show you this. Um, if you're looking at a graph, one, two, three, there's three, and that's zero on the y-axis, so that's the point of intersection right there. I have no idea what these lines look like, but it, you know they're going to cross right there. Okay, that's basically what's going on, right? I'll get rid of that. All right, so the point of intersection. You'll see that when we do graphing of it. All right, so let's write it as a coordinate pair, x comma y. And so that's 3, comma, 0. All right, and that's the answer. That's what you're going to put in the box. And that is the end of number 3. Very good. All right, here we are in number 4. So and we, we now know what we're doing. We're basically just going to solve one of these equations for y and then substitute it into the other equation. Let's write it out. It's like, you know, part one or step one. And I think I'll do the top equation, okay? So part one, I'm going to solve 2x plus 2y equals negative 4 Okay, F-O-R, for Y. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 2X plus 2Y equals negative 4. And... Let's bring in the ruler and make a guide mark so we keep our equal signs lined up. And remember, keep your eye on the ball. What are we solving for? We're solving for y, okay? We're trying to get y by itself. Okay, so we work from the outside in. So in this case, I would start by subtracting 2x from both sides. And that will cancel out the two x's there. So I have 2y equals, remember these don't mix at all, negative 2x. You always write the thing with the letter first, and then minus 4. Okay, well, let's see. Now we're going to divide everything by 2. So I can cancel those twos, and we have y equals 
negative 2 over 2, that reduces down to just negative 1x. So I'm going to write negative 1x. And then negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, so minus 2. So now I have this. And I'm going to substitute it in. I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in to this equation right here. And I'm going to plug it in right here. Okay, So that's where it's going. So now let's write what we're going to do. We are going, this is part two. This is the substitution part. We're going to sub negative 1x minus 2 for for y in this equation in 7x plus 3y equals 14 and find x. Okay? So let's do that. Let's write 7x plus 3 and then do a big open parentheses big close parentheses put space in between equals 14 time for the ruler make our guide mark right there and let's plug it in we have negative 1x minus 2. Okay? Well, this is, there's no mumbo jumbo here. This is a straightforward because it's not any fractions. We're just going to distribute the 3 into the parentheses. That's multiplication. So we have 7x. And then think about it 3 times negative 1x is minus. 3x, three, 3 times negative 2, minus 6 equals 14. Hey, let's get the 6 out of there. Plus 6, plus 6. And now I can combine these like terms together. 7x minus 3x, that's going to give me 4x equals 14 plus 6 is 20. So divide both sides by 4. x equals 5. Well now we know that x equals 5. That is really great news. So we know that x equals 5 and we're going to do a third part now. We can choose either equation. The top equation looks a little easier to deal with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'll do it right here. This is part three. I'm going to sub x equals five into um, the top equation, into two x plus two y equals negative four into 2x plus 2y equals negative 4 and solve for y. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's plug it in. So we have Apologies for that interruption. Um, so we're going to write 2 and then open parentheses, close parentheses, plus 2y equals negative 4. And then inside there, I'm going to put 5, right? Because that's what x equals. So now I have 10, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2y equals negative 4. Let's subtract 10 from both sides. And I have 2y equals negative 14. Divide both sides by 2. 
and I get y equals negative 7, okay? Which is great news, because now I have both x and y, so the solution is 5 comma negative 7, x comma y. And that is the end of number 4. Okay, great job. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with number five. And, you know, this is just like the other problems where it's in standard form. So let's go ahead and solve one of these for y. And so we'll, as step one, here we'll solve 6x minus 7y equals 11 for for y okay so let's do that we have 6x minus 7y equals 11 now let's get our ruler out or our protractor and put in some kind of guide and now we will remember we're trying to get this by itself so we want to subtract 6x from both sides. Remember, algebra is an Arabic word, algebra. It means to keep in balance. So we want to keep things in balance. That's why we do it on both sides of the equation. And so now we have negative 7y equals negative 6x plus 11. And what we're going to do now is divide everything by negative 7. So we're going to divide by negative 7, negative 7, negative 7. Okay. And of course, the reason for doing that is cancel, cancel. And now y is by itself equal to two negatives make a positive. So we just have 6 sevenths x minus, because we have a positive and a negative, 11 sevenths. These are all irreducible fractions, so we just leave it like that. And now what we're going to do is take this, okay? We're going to take this, and remember, we, we already used this one, okay? So this guy's used up. So we're going to use this top equation here, and I'm going to put this, okay? I'm going to stick this here. I'm going to replace or substitute the y with this. Okay? And that's what we're going to do in the next step. And that's the substitution part. So let's let's state what we're going to do. Okay. Um, so this is step two. We are going to substitute, I need to see it, 6 over 7x minus 11 over 7. I'll put that in parentheses there. We're going to substitute that for for y okay, in this equation. Uh, negative 6x plus 7y equals negative 11. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And then what? And then solve for x. Okay, that's what our goal is. So let's do that. So I'm going to write negative 6x plus 7. And then I'm going to do a big open parentheses here and a big close parentheses and put net equals negative 11. I'm even going to draw my guide and then we'll plug it in. Okay, so now I got the guide going there. And so now remember I'm just going to put 6 7 x minus 11 7 inside the parentheses there. So I have 6 over 7x 
minus 11 over 7. Okay, so this is where we would distribute this 7. However, the 7, remember, 7 equals 7 over 1. So if I think of the 7 as a 7 over 1, I can cancel. You see what I did there? I canceled the 7 on the outside with the two denominator 7s. Now that only worked because both of the denominators uh, were 7s. Um, otherwise I could not have done that trick. Okay. Now what does that leave on the outside? It leaves behind a 1 when you do it that way. Okay. Which basically means it leaves behind nothing, right? It's just, so you're, I'll rewrite it so you can see what I mean. So you write minus 6x or negative 6x plus, and now look what you've got. All that remains inside uh, the parentheses there is 6x minus 11, okay? So you, you don't have to have the parentheses anymore. You can just put 6x minus 11 equals negative 11. But now look at something weird. You have a negative 6x plus 6x. Well, these are like terms, and they combine to equal 0, right? So this equals 0, right? And so a lot of times you see me just cross through it like that. All right, so the only thing on the left side is negative 11, and that equals negative 11. Mm hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. What? What's happening? What's going on? So we've run out of variables, and so now, um, when you see something like this, one of two things is happening. It's either it's an A B situation. Okay. It's either all real numbers. or it's no solution. And the way that you tell is you ask yourself a question. Here's the question. You ready? You ask the question, is this true? If it's true, then it's all real numbers. If it's false, then it's no solution. So here it is. Ready? Does negative 11 equal negative 11 by the identity property of equality? Yes, it does. Yes, it is true. Therefore, the answer is all real numbers. Now, that only occurs in one situation. That means that these lines, if we were to graph them, they're the same line. It's the same equation. In other words, if I were to graph it, right? Here's a little graph. And I graph the top equation. Let's see, I don't care. I don't know what it looks like, but let's just say it, it looked like that. And then I graph the bottom equation. You'd see it perfectly draw over the top equation. That means that the intersection point is everywhere. Okay, and that's why it's all real numbers. All right, so we did number five. Good job. And here we are with number six. This is the final problem from the practice set. And, you know, just like before, we have to solve for y and then plug it in and blah, blah, blah. So our first step, I guess we'll do, I think I'll do the top one. Okay, so I'm going to solve. So this is the one I'm going to use, all right? I'm going to solve negative 18x plus 15y equals 2 for 4y. Okay, so let's do it. We have negative 18x plus 15y equals 2. Guideline. Let's get our guideline in there so we keep our equal signs all lined up. And now, remember, what am I solving for? Just, you know, it's always helpful to go back and say, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm solving for y, 
So I'm trying to isolate that. And so I better add 18x to both sides because I, I eat from the outside in. I eat the, um, I think about it, what would you eat from the outside in? Like a, an apple, right? Or an orange or something. Um, you got to peel the onion one layer at a time. So first we'll add 18x to both sides. Okay. Think about this like another example would be like the earth. It's got the crust, the mantle, then the core. There's the core, here's the mantle, here's the crust, etc. Okay. Enough analogies. We have 15y equals, these don't mix, 18x plus 2. Remember, we always write the variable thing first and then the constant. This is a constant, this is a variable. Okay, this is called a coefficient of a variable. Okay, enough of that. Let's divide everything by 15. I guess I just decided to make my life hard for no reason, um, but whatever. Um, y equals, now what can we take out here? Because we can reduce this fraction. They share a common factor of 3, which gives, if I divide top and bottom by 3, I get 6 fifths. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier. I've got 6 over 5x. 2 fifteenths have no common factors because 2 is prime, and 15 factors are 3 and 5, so we just have 2 over 15. Okay, and now let's go into plugging into the other one. So I've got this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in here. All right. So that's the substitution part, right? So let's uh, make this a little squiggly. And let's write, we are going to sub, substitute 6 over 5x plus 2 over 15 for for y in the equation negative 18x plus 15. Sorry, I already used that one. Um, in this one, okay, in this equation. In negative 6x plus 5y equals 1. And solve for x, okay? That's what we're doing now, so let's do it. We have, I was supposed to make that, uh, I was supposed to write part two. Okay, this is part one. And I'm supposed to make that red, aren't I? Trying to be consistent here. There, now it's all red except for that little mark, doesn't matter. Let's do it. So I'm going to put minus 6x plus 5, and then open parentheses big time. Big open parentheses, big close parentheses. Give it a lot of space, equals 1. Time for the ruler to come give us some guidance. You catch that? All right, and now let's plug in what we're going to plug in. So we are going to plug in this. Okay, we're going to stick this right here. So I'm going to write six over five x plus two over fifteen. All right, now I'm going to distribute this five into these equations, okay? Now when I do that, there's gonna be an, uh, an opportunity here for me to cancel some stuff because if you notice, we have something cool going on. We have a five here, a five here, and a 15 here. Remember, 15 equals three times five. So I can cancel, cancel, cancel. And I'm dividing 5 by 5. That's 1. Let's find a color I haven't used. Um, purple. 
that will leave behind a one outside. And here's a one down here. And 15 divided by five is three, so that's gonna be a three. Okie dokie. So now I've got negative six X, and think about what's gonna be left behind. Inside, you're gonna have six X plus two, all right? So put plus six X plus two equals one. And now we have this situation here. I have negative 6x plus 6x, and that's where you see me, because that, that equals zero, okay? So you just see me cross it out. And now I've got two equals one. And we're back to what is going on. And remember, is it true? If the answer is yes, it's all real numbers. If the answer is no, it's no solution. Does two equal one? No. This is what we call no. Two equals one is a false equivalence. Okay, we represent that with this symbol. Does not equal, so you could does not two does not equal one all right therefore there are no solutions and that only happens in one situation okay here's what that means come back up here and look at the equation I'm going to write something important these lines are parallel. How do I know that? Because the only time two lines never intersect is when they're parallel. Otherwise they'll intersect at some point in Euclidean geometry um, on, a, on, this, on the coordinate plane. Okay, so if I, if I were to graph this, okay, that, wow, that's why you use a ruler. <laughs> okay, that was ridiculous. Um, if I were to graph this, it would look something like this. I don't know. You'd have one going like this, and then you'd have the other line come in uh, looking like parallel to it, okay? They would never cross. And that's how you'd know they're parallel. They have the same slope, by the way. Same slope. There's a lot about this that we can go into, but you know, we're gonna we're not gonna go off on tangents. That's it, number six, done. End of tutorial. Good job, guys.